road with Simon Watts of Wild Presentations today and we're driving to RSPB Minsmere in Suffolk. We want to be there at first light before the crowds, so that means a very early start. As our journey progresses, eventually the sky to the east pales, revealing broken cloud. The forecast is for some sunshine, but cold, and then we're treated to glimpses of a beautiful sunrise. The approach to the reserve is heavily wooded. With the windows down, we listen for nightingale song, but none are singing. We arrive at the reserve, and the sun is still very low in the sky, and it bathes the surrounding trees and gorse bushes in a golden light. As we unload our equipment out of the car, the Minsmere rabbits come out to graze, including this tiny youngster, already having to fend for itself. In the tree above our heads, we see a pair of black cat, and they have a nest in the bush at the base of the tree. We pass the San Martin bank, and there doesn't seem to be much activity, because despite the cold, the birds are already on the wing. As we walk further into the reserve, we're rewarded by stunning skies and brilliant shafts of sunlight penetrate the clouds. In the treetops, goldfinches sing, their song rising above the stiff breeze, and then the piercing song of a dunnock who falls silent as we pass. Unlike this white throat that continues to sing its raspy, scratchy song. We feel raindrops and suspect that maybe a shower is on its way. There's been a lot of rain during the night, so we seek shelter in the North Hyde. The North Hyde looks out over a scrape that's surrounded by a badger-proof fence, and on the horizon looms Sizewell Nuclear Power Station. But also, there's a wealth of birds to be seen. These are barnacle geese. There are at least seven or eight of them. The wild birds can be seen in the UK between October and March, with some hanging around until mid-April. But these birds are more likely to be part of the UK's feral population. We also have this drake shoveler. Have a set. And the unaptly named black-headed gulls, because their heads are actually dark brown. Well, the shower doesn't arrive after all, so we leave the North Hyde and make our way to the reed beds, and overhead flies this beautiful marsh area, the sun catching its gorgeous plumage. At the reed beds, we listen for the distinctive ping-ping sound of bearded tit, but we hear only the raspy, busy chatter of reed and sedge warbler. Simon plays a recording of bearded tits on his phone to attract any that are nearby. But with a reed bed this size, you have to be in the right place at the right time. We reach the coast and the sun is glinting off the surface of the North Sea. And we watch the waves crashing on the beach. And the north wind whips up white horses. On the hilltop is the National Trust building at Dunwich Heath where we plan to visit later. We leave the coast moving inland again and we see reed bunting. And once again the male marsh harrier, which is probably the same bird. Our next stop will be the bittern hide. We take the woodland path past these beautiful bluebells and take a moment to watch a pair of blue tip busy in their courtship. And this tree creeper slowly makes its way up the tree silhouetted against the bright sky beyond. The bittern hide is busy and several long lenses peer out across the reed bed. And somewhere, unseen in that reed bed, the bittern booms. And this male marsh harrier, possibly the same bird as we saw before, quarters over the reed bed, possibly hunting, or maybe somewhere in the reeds he has a mate on a nest. Their breeding season starts in April, but this male has been dropping and immediately rising again in different parts of the reed bed, so it's more likely that he's on the hunt. As the male marsh harrier drops out of sight, our eye is caught by movement in the reeds closer to the hide. This male bittern has emerged from its hiding place and makes its way furtively along the water's edge, before eventually coming out more into the open, affording us a clearer view. And then one bittern becomes two, 
as another male appears on the opposite side of the cut. An unfortunate amphibian or fish has caught his eye, but he's unlucky this time. And there you can see the pale blue patch at the base of his beak, which tells you he's a male. Along with Leighton Moss, RSPB Minsmere is one of the top places to see these birds. They're so beautifully camouflaged and secretive, but it's always a privilege when you get excellent views like this. We leave Minsmere now and head to a place where we've been told nightingales have been singing and showing. On a footpath near King's Farm, not far from the reserve, this is where nightingales have been reported, so we head off with fingers crossed and we listen intently for any nightingale song. No nightingales, but we can hear the melodic fluting song of Black Cat. We venture a little off the footpath into Wesselton Heath and listen again. We can hear chiff chaff and maybe distant nightingale. And then suddenly, in a tree close by, a short burst of nightingale song. And there again, but the bird remains hidden, but at least we got to hear a nightingale. So we're on the road again to our final destination of the day, Dunwich Heath. We've come here in the hope of filming Dartford Warblers, a bird I've never seen, let alone filmed. So we head out onto the heath and we hear one short burst of song way off. One of the guides tells us that it may be too windy for them to show and I think he could be right and they'll be hunkered down low in the gorse, sheltering from the wind. But we spend a couple of hours on the heath in the vain hope that we might get lucky. But our persistence goes unrewarded and we plan a return visit on a calmer, warmer day, maybe in June. But what an excellent day it's been. See you next time.